Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's interesting how the Lord can just make a scripture just stand out to speak to you, to tell you something. And in this hour, the most important thing is not looking for the rapture, but looking to Jesus as our hope. The rapture is not our hope. Jesus is our hope. And we're going to get into that in this message. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will speak what you want to speak through me, Lord, and give understanding to us, Lord, about what you're saying in your word, and that we heed what you say. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I was reading in Mark chapter 13, thinking about all the people that believe in the pre-trib rapture, that they're going to be swept away out of here before any trouble comes. Well, that right there with what's going on in the world, they should know right off the bat that's a false teaching and I'm going to show you and prove to you it's a false teaching and all these preachers that are preaching this are false teachers plain and simple and they're not helping the body of Christ by preaching this false doctrine they are harming the body of Christ and not getting people prepared to endure what's coming. Now I'm just going to read this to you. Let's just start in Mark chapter 13. I'm just going to read, let's see, let's start at the signs of the close of the age. Mark 13:3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. Okay, right off the bat, Jesus is saying, He's fixing to tell them some other things, but he's telling them right off the bat, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. And I'm just going to say right off the bat, those that have been sucked into this doctrine of the pre-trib rapture, being swept away before they get into any tribulation, you've been deceived. Plain and simple. Because that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what Jesus himself said. And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That's happening now. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled. See, Jesus is saying right off the bat, he's telling us, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. Now listen to what Jesus says, guys. These are the red letters, okay? For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows but take heed to yourselves for they shall deliver you up to councils and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake for a testimony against them is that happening now yes it is and the gospel must first be published among all nations but when they shall lead you and deliver you up Take no thought beforehand what, she, what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. In other words, let it be Holy Spirit 
all the way what you say, led by the Holy Spirit. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. This is not something you're going to write a sermon out a month in advance, okay? You're going to be led by the Spirit of God or you're not. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son. Is that happening now? Yeah. And children shall rise up against their parents. Is that happening? Yes, it is. And shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he, now here it is, guys, right here, here it is. But he that shall endure. This is why we're talking about this today. God wants his people to know, hey, I am trying to get you ready for what's to come. So that you may endure it and come out on the other side as gold. That he that shall endure unto the end. Not cut loose and run away or go back. Uh uh. He that shall endure unto the end. The same shall be saved. Now, but when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Now, this is like a double deal for them back then and for us now. He's telling them, this is, this is how you're going to know. I'm, I'm going to tell you in advance what's going to happen. And he does. He tells us in advance. He might say, I want you to move over here, blah, blah, blah. And he did that back then, too. And it kept his people from destruction because they obeyed what he said. Now, if people don't obey what he says, that's not his fault, nor anyone else's. And then he says here, And let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. In other words, you can't go back and load up your personal goods when he tells you to do something. You need to get going. Get going. And do what he says. And let him that is in the field not turn back again, for to take up his garment. I mean, this is like an emergency deal. Doesn't it sound that way to you? There's been a lot of emergencies lately. Did those people gather up their belongings before they went to the storm shelter? If they had, have, they'd have been part of the rebel. Are you getting what is being said here? And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Now, right now, everything's going on. They're eating and drinking, making in marriage. Whatever the world does, they're doing it. Just like in Noah's day, unaware that the destruction is right on the brink. Okay? And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Now, listen to these following scriptures. Listen. Really have ears to hear this. Those of you that are caught up in the pre-trib rapture deception, listen. And I pray God open your ears to hear the truth from the mouth of Jesus himself. For in those days... Mark 13, verse 19. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Think about that verse. There's been a lot of affliction, a lot of pressure, a lot of tribulation. But he said, it's going to be it's going to be worse than it's ever been even from the beginning of the creation think about what he's saying here which god created unto this time neither shall be 
In other words, neither is there going to be a time even after that. It's going to be so great. Now, I'll tell you what. God is trying to prepare his church to endure. But if you have the mindset, I'm going to get out of here, and I'm not going to have to go through anything, you're not prepared. You're not prepared. God wants you to be prepared in the midst of everything. Right now, the judgments are falling. Whether you think they're judgments or not from God, they are. He uses evil people. He uses evil um, things that people create. The inventions of man, he uses those things. He is using these judgments in this hour. People every day in God's mercy, he has taken people so they won't have to go through what's coming. And he's also judging and taking away those in judgment. Right now in this hour with what's going on in this world. For in those days shall be affliction, Mark thirteen nineteen, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. See, the Lord is saying... It's going to be a pretty bad time, but he's going to shorten the days of that affliction for his elect's sake. Now, if his elect was not here, why would he say, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days? It's because they are going to be here, but they're going to endure to the end. Now, verse 21, And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. Believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible even the elect. Now, here it is again. But take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. Now listen. Verse 24 of Mark 13. But in those days after the tribulation. Okay, did you hear what I said? But in those days after that tribulation. What tribulation? that's greater even before the beginning to the end of any tribulation that's ever happened in this earth. You think about it. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Now you think about this. Think about the magnitude of this. Okay? And then. And then. We'll say it again. And then. Shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. After that tribulation. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds. From the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now I want to read this again. But in those days after that tribulation. This is Jesus speaking. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels, and shall gather together his elect 
from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Okay, there it is, right there. Jesus is making it very clear. So, those teaching otherwise, other than what he said in his word, what are they? What are they teaching? If it's contrary to what Jesus said in his word, well, they're teaching falsely. And they're false teachers. And you're following them, if you're following them, and you're caught up in this doctrine, and you believe this doctrine, that you're not going to have to be in any tribulation, that you're not going to have to be in what Jesus said you will be in. He's going to cut the time short because of his chosen. But we will be going through it. Now, people talk about these inventions that these wicked people have, that they can uh, change the weather and do all this stuff. Well, that may be so. But they can't do it without God's permission. You need to understand this. All of you need to understand this. God is in control. They can't just do it without his permission. Just like the devil couldn't touch Job without God's permission. Well, they can't touch his creation without his permission either. And he goes further to say he's going to destroy those that destroy the earth. So destruction is in their future, according to God Almighty. The important thing about this mes message is endurance. When people say their hope is that they're going to get raptured out, well, that's the wrong, that's the wrong hope. Because our hope is Jesus Christ and Him alone. That's our hope. That's our peace. That's our deliverance. That's our healing. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The thing is, the important thing right now is prepare. There should be a preparation. Prepare to meet your God. The most important message today should be get your heart right with God. Make sure your heart is right with God, that you're clean before Him, that you've confessed all your sin and been forgiven. That's the most important message. Lord, prepare me. Show me what you want me to do in this hour. And do what He says. Don't put your hope in anything else or anyone else except for the Lord Jesus Christ and cry out to him to be right with him and to be ready and to endure whatever you have to endure. There's been so many instances of young people, old people going through such terrible things, but God brought them through. He brought him through. He brought him through to the end. He made it so they would in, endure as they clung to him during everything that was going on. He was there for them. He's there for us. He will keep us in this time. He will help us. He will help us to endure whatever it is we have to endure. But don't be deceived and think that you're going to get in. The only way that you will get out of what's coming is if he, in his mercy, will take you in death so that you don't have to endure what's coming. But then, like I said before, he also takes people in judgment. Don't be deceived. If you have been deceived and you believe this thing and you're all sucked into this thing, you need to repent. You really need to repent. 
and start from this day forward. Lord, prepare me. I want to endure whatever you allow in my life, whatever you want to happen in my life to to make me into your image. You need to read the word of the saints of old and what they endured and how they endured. It's a good lesson for us all. I'm going to read over in Matthew 24 too. You need to read all of Mark 13 and all of Matthew 24. Listen, these are the words of Jesus Christ. If you believe in anything else, you're believing a lie. You've got sucked into a lie. Matthew 24. The coming of the Son of Man. Matthew 24, 29. Now listen, here it is again. Immediately after that tribulation, which is what I just got through reading in Mark. Greater than anything that's ever been, that kind of tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now there it is, y'all. In red letters, Jesus said it. What are you going to say? He didn't? Well, then you don't believe the word of God. You have one of these perverted Bibles that doesn't even say that? Then you better get the right kind of Bible. King James. And not the new version either. It's serious, you guys. For one thing, these wicked people of the earth, they're trying to bring the Bible to pass. And you say, oh, no, they're not really. The devil used the Bible on Jesus in the wilderness. And they're trying to make it come to pass with all the stuff they're trying to do right now. It's not going to work. Jesus has his time when he's going to come back. I just read it to you just now. What they're doing is they're priming everybody for their false Christ return. Don't be caught up in it, you guys. Better believe the word and believe what Jesus said. And don't be caught up in deception in this hour. The Lord is with his people. He's going to help his people. He's going to help us all to endure this time. But I tell you what, all these tribulations up to this time, he's preparing us for the great tribulation time. We've been in tribulation a long time. Think, Just read the word. All through these years. But he says there's coming a time that's never been, okay? He's been preparing us through all the stuff we've been going through and everything else to endure. That's what you need to be thinking about in this hour, to endure. Lord, help me. And crying out to him to be cleansed of all that's not of him and get on the right track. Get out of this world. Separate yourself from the world. Come out of her, my people. In Jesus' name, amen.